In this video, we will learn how to add combat to our motion matching system, including rolls, combat animations, strafing, and damage system, in a new way I created myself, which I also used to remade Relana for meddling in a video I uploaded to the other channel, which also will be fully playable in a few days. So if you are interested about how I made it, see the end result, or just play it yourself, there is a link down below to the new channel. Now after all that yapping, let's begin. Firstly, in order to start the tutorial, you need to have your motion matching system as we did in the previous video. We will use the combat animations of Quang from the free Paragon assets. So go to the Epic Games client and add it to your project. One last thing we need to import is a sword. I will use the big sword from the free fantasy weapon sample. First, let me introduce our problem. The Paragon animations does not have root motion, means they can't be used in the motion matching database. So I had to work my way around it, and this is the solution. Our lower body will use the motion matching system we made, the upper body will use the state machines, and the two will be connected with layer blend per bone node. It's much more simple than it sounds, let's do it. Let's first retarget our quang animations. Go to a random animation, retarget, select our skeleton, and select idle, jog forward, jump apex, jump land, and the attack montages. Click export, make a new folder, call it combat animations, and export. Now let's use them. Go to our animation blueprint, right click and select layered blend parent bone. We will connect our base pose to the motion matching. And as for the blend pose, as I said, we will create a state machine. Call it sword locker and double click it. Right click and add a new state and Ctrl D 4 times to duplicate it. I won't explain too deep here how state machine works, I have an 8 minute video dedicated to it if you wanna know more about it. But real short, in each state you put animations and the system knows what animations to choose based on the transition rule you will feel when you double click this. So if we want to move between idle and run, we will do it when our speed isn't zero and of course from run to idle, when it is zero. From run to jump, when we are falling. And from jump to land, when we are not. From land to run, just click automatic call based on sequence, which means that it will do the land animations and immediately move to the run animations. Now double click each state and fill the animation that's needed to be there. You know, idle for idle, jog forward to run, jump apex to jump, and jump land for land. And we're done. Now go back to the anime graph. We need to tell the system which bone we want to blend animations. So click the blend node, open layer setup, and add an element. For the base bone, click up here on the skeleton and go to spine 05. That's where we want the blend to be. So right click, copy name and paste it here. As for depth, let's put one. The lower the number, the more effect the base pose will have on the animation. And we want our animation to look as much as the motion matching animations as possible. As for the sword, first we need to make an actor and call it BP sword. Add the skeleton mesh and choose our sword. Go back to our skeleton and search for hand R. We need to create a socket for the sword to attach to. So add a socket, call it sword socket, and fill up those numbers. Why those numbers? Really simple, because I tried many numbers and those fitted the best for the position of the sword. Now to attach it, go back to our third person blueprint. Go to begin play and spawn an actor. We want to spawn our sword, so choose it. Choose always spawn, right click here and click promote a variable, so our life will be easier in the future. Call it my weapon and from here attach actor to component. Connect the target to our weapon and grab our mesh and connect it to the parent. We want to attach it to the socket we just made. So copy and paste its name. Choose snap to target 
and keyboard. As for this thing, just right click and select split pin. Nice, now let's try. Obviously the sword isn't in the right place. So go back to our sword and just copy those numbers. As before, why those? I tested numbers and those work the best. Now let's try another time. Perfect. It's really good. Nice. And now for our second part, the attack sets. As I said before, I created a new way of doing it, which in my opinion is much more simple and better than the previous ones, and in this one we are using choosers. Let's start. Go to our third person BP and get a left mouse button node for the attack. Press B and left click to get a branch node and create a new variable called can attack. Hold it with control to get a get node and connect it to the branch. Now, if we can attack, then now we can no longer attack. Now create a new variable called is attacking and set it to true. And for the main thing, we need to create a new chooser table. So go to the folder where we have the previous table and create another one. In my previous video, I explained everything there is on choosers. So if you don't understand why we are doing something, go and check it out. Click on table settings, go to our output object and select montage. And our input will be class and our third person BP since we want to get information from there. Now add a row, and of course, we will have animation montages here, since we put animation montages in our output. So choose all of our attack montages, and just pay attention that those are the retargeted ones. In order to create an attack combo, we need an attack count. So let's go back to third person, and add a new variable called attack count and make it a float. Super important to click compile, go back to our table, click on add column and select float. This is how the table will know what animation to give us. Put the same numbers as I did right here. I will explain why later on. How do we know when to use the air attack? Let's add another column and in the blueprint create another variable called is falling. In order to set him, just create an event tick, grab a set node, grab our character movement, get is falling and connect it. If we are falling, then it's true. If not, then it's false. Don't forget to compile and then add it to our table. We need to add one more row that I forgot about, my bad, for the air attack. So really quick, let's retarget our air attack, make an animation montage and add it to our table, and my recording was deleted from some reason, but don't forget to choose here, attack count. We want is falling to be false to every animation except the air attack. We don't want our player to be able to move during the attack. So let's make a new variable called can move. Now back in the table, we have a really cool and new topic. In the column, we have output options as well, which can change our class variables. In our case, we can change if we can move or not from here. We can't move in any animation unless it's the air attack, which we do want to move. And don't forget to choose can move here. And for our last column, we can actually set our damage numbers from this table. So let's create another variable, call it attack damage and set it to float. Now in the table, we can set different damage to each attack in such an easy way. Pretty cool, huh? So put any damage numbers that you want, and don't forget to set the column to the variable. And we are done with the table. Now let's go back to the blueprint, and disable our movement when can move is false. B to branch, control to get, and we can move when it's true, and can't when it's false. Let's go back to our attack function, and add our table. Just type choosers, get the only option and select our new table. Get a play any montage node and connect the any montage to our result, which as we put before, is our montages. Now we have a new super important topic 
called Blueprint Interface. Most of you all probably know what it is, but for those who don't, this is our way to communicate between different blueprints. It's super simple. Just right click, Blueprint, create Blueprint Interface, and call it BPI Weapon. In here, create a new function called Weapon Damage. Then, create an input variable called Damage Num and set it to float. And don't forget to compile. In order to use it, go to Sword BP, Class Settings, click on Add Interface, and choose our new BPI. Now, if you type Event Damage, you can access to the function we just made. Go back to our third person BP. And now we can call Weapon Damage here. Now we can set information from here to our weapon. So connect those two and bring the weapon variable we saved earlier. That's how you communicate between two blueprints. We will use this function later on. First, let's finish our attack. The last thing with our attack is the attack count. For that we need to go to the emission blueprint. Also, open one of our montages. Since we target existing montages, we already have two notifies here, so we don't need to make them ourselves. But in case you don't know, in order to create a new one, you right click and click new notify. We will do it later on for other thing. The two notifies we have right now will be used to increase our attack count in the table and reset it back to zero. All we need to do is right click and type the name of the notify. Now this event will start whenever this notify is activated. But in order to change our attack count, we need an access to it. So let's go up to what we did in our last tutorial. Go to our cast and promote our BP to variable, just for convenience purposes. Connect everything, and then grab this character if, get our attack count, and save it as a variable. Go back to our notify functions, get a set node for our attack count, get a get node, and increase a number by one whenever this function is happening. Again, this is how we switch between montages in the chooser's table. In order to set our actual variable, get a character ref and set its attack count. Now we need to go back to our third person BP and create a custom event named reset attack. When it happens, we want to reset, so set is attacking to false and can attack to true. Go back to our ABP and we will call it after we finish attacking, because obviously, after we finish attack, we want to be able to attack again. As for our rest combo notify, we want to set our attack count to zero, so the montage will go back to the first one, and copy those from above. Also, we want to set our can move to true here, because when the attack ends, we want to be able to move again. And one last thing, in order to use those montages, double click on one of them. Here you can see it says default group upper body. Normally it will be default group, but that's how they set it before we retargeted the montage. So go to our ABP, type default slot, click it, and choose upper body under slot name. Before we test the results, don't forget to change can move to be true, and can attack to be true as well. Real quick, let's put notify in our air montage as well. Since we retargeted the animation and not the montage, we only need the reset notify, since this attack is not in the combo. We also need to change its slot from default to upper body, since our other montages are on that slot as well. So just add the slot, add our animation, and delete the previous slot. Also, I will change the end time so the animation will look a bit better. And we're done. Now let's check it out. Perfect. Now let's move to the damage system. First, go to our sword and add a collision box. Parent it to skeletal mesh, change parent socket to wood grip, and reset all settings. Now just adjust the box to be as you want, and obviously, if you want, you can just copy those numbers for me. When you're done, scroll down and click the second plus. It will create a function that's activated when the component which is our hitbox is being overlapped. We need to make sure that we don't damage ourselves. So get a branch node, get a plier node. From here, type exclamation mark for a not equal node and attach it to the other actor in the branch. So when the overlapping actor isn't our character, we want to apply damage to them. As for the base damage, let's create a variable called sword damage and set it to float. 
go to our BPI event, get a set node, and connect these two together. Now the damage from the chooser's table will be the damage applied to our target. Now we need a way to let the system know when to actually damage, because we don't want our player to run with a sword in his hand and hit anyone he touches without any animation. So go to our animation and create a new notify, called attack ready. Put it where the character starts to attack, and create another notify, called attack not ready, and put it when attack is ending. Do the same for all of the attacks. And obviously, we don't need to create new notifies, just select the one that we just made. How do we use those notifies? We go back to our ABP and type attack ready and not ready. We need to send that information for the attack function. So how do we communicate between blueprints? Open our BPI and add two new functions called attack ready and attack not ready. We don't need any input, just the communication. Then in order to access it from here, we need a character weapon, so grab it from our character reference and connect to the new attack ready function. Do the same for the attack not ready, with the attack not ready function of course. Last thing we need to do is to go to our sword and call those two events. We need to create a bool variable and call it be attack ready. We will set it to true when our attack is ready and false when it's not. Go to our damage function and in the start at the branch. We want the damage to occur only when attack is ready. Let me just organize that for a second. And now I see that I forgot to connect our sword damage to the base damage. Always organize your code. Now let's just add a do once node to prevent from our sword to do damage several times by mistake. And reset this node when our attack is not ready because then our attack is over and we can do damage again in the next one. Let's real quick make an enemy, just to test it. Create a character, put a skeletal mesh, make an HP variable, set it to float, and at begin play, set it to whatever you want. Now call event any damage. That's the other end of the apply damage function. To reduce our HP, just get a set node and set it to our current HP, minus the damage from the function. Pretty simple. And let's print the outcome, so we'll be able to see that it works. Super important thing that I noticed. In our attack function of the first person BP, I connected the damage num. I connected the damage num to the animontage node. De attach it and attach to the variable attack damage. Let's make the enemy larger, so it will be easier to hit and test it. Perfect. This video is already way too long. 27 minutes I was aiming for. I will upload a video tomorrow with the direction rolls and strafing in combat mode added to our system. If there is something else that you want to see, comment it right now and I will try to add it to the video. A quick reminder that I uploaded to my other channel a video about remaking Grelana in UE5. Please check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this video as much as you can. That's the best way you can help me keep making those videos. If you can afford it, I finally opened Patreon and get me a coffee, which can also help me a lot. Like the video if you liked, subscribe to see my future videos, click here to go to my other channel, and as always, have a beautiful day. Peace.